What's up and welcome to my final summer review of the Alienware M16. This is a higher end, more premium chassis compared to most gaming laptops with higher quality materials, in particular for the keyboard top deck. It's a very nice soft rubber with a metal top lid and a metal underside with Thunderbolt 4 support and some overall really nice uh, build quality. Very stiff hinge, very firm, very low flex on the chassis. We've got Windows Hello for logging in, which is also a nice premium bonus. Now, some areas where it's not very premium, right? We're gonna go ahead and go ahead and talk about some of the pros and cons here. Uh, con, display brightness was only 276 nits. And at the current price of $18.99, that is not ideal, all right? So inside of an indoor environment, the display is plenty bright. You can enjoy the display. It's gonna be a good gaming experience. But if you're in a room that has direct sunlight, 276 nits really may not be enough to really see everything on the display really, really well. Now, big shout out and thank you to Best Buy for sending over the LG Ultra Gear and the Alienware M16 R2 for me to test. And I also wanna make it clear that I am able to be completely honest with you about all of the pros and cons of the product. That is literally written into my sponsorship contract and I don't take sponsorships where I can't be honest about the products. Now, taking a look at the LG Ultra Gear OLED dual native 4K 240Hz and full HD 480Hz. So if you wanna play Counter-Strike at 480Hz refresh rate, you can do that. And it's OLED, so it's super fast response rate with G-Sync capabilities and AMD FreeSync. Now I've been using the LG Ultra Gear 32 inch monitor for about a month now, and it is fantastic. Really phenomenal details, extremely responsive, and I've had zero issues with the monitor itself. Plus, I mean, it's gorgeous. It's got a great color gamut. So you've got a lot of settings in here. You've got some color modes with different game modes. You've got a dual mode where you go for 1080p, or 4K, you can set it to go to 24 inch, 27 inch, or full size as well. And then you've got adaptive sync, so you can turn off G-Sync or free sync, black stabilizer level, adding a crosshair, adding an FPS counter. You can adjust the colors as well. So you've got brightness, peak brightness, contrast, sharpness, gamma, and color temps. Oh my God, the volume has only been set to 30% this whole time. This is gonna be a really loud monitor now. OLED screensaver. If there's no change to the screen for a set period of time, it'll turn off. Brightness wise, we got 304 nits approximately at the highest test with 304,000 to one contrast ratio. This is a bright enough display for indoor use when not in direct sunlight. Uh, like if you're in a room with super bright windows, you might want a brighter monitor, but if you're gonna be in an office type environment, this monitor is plenty bright and usable as it is, and the contrast ratio makes everything super poppy. Overall, this monitor has been superb, and if you're in the market for a 4K dual native that can also go 480 hertz, 1080p, then this is certainly one that you should take a look at. Now, without further ado, let's get back to the full review for the Alienware M16 R2. Power adapter is 240 watts, it has an LED indicator light as well when this thing has power, so the, the cable is not very long, sadly, for the power adapter. Um, it's only about probably eight feet total length, which I feel like it really should be longer. 240 watts should be plenty enough for the RTX 4070 and the Core Ultra 7 in this. We really didn't see a combined power draw of more than about 170 or so watts for the total system. Removing the bottom was not that hard. It was pretty easy. We were able to take off six screws with two pop-up screws. Both of the front screws are pop-up screws. So keep that in mind. Uh, and then once you pop it up, you need to slide it off the back rear area and it, it comes apart pretty easily. You have accessible to both of the sodium slots as well as two M.2 PCIe Gen 4 SSDs, uh, which is plenty for upgrading a 90 watt hour battery with two speakers that sound pretty good as long as you're not doing mids, highs, and lows all at the same time. Now, volume wise, they do get pretty loud at around 87 decibels. And overall, I would give them around like an eight or so, maybe 7.9 or so, maybe for the speaker system. They're really nothing special, 
they're not bad, but they're not great either, all right? So definitely something to keep in mind if you're wanting a more premium sounding speaker system in a laptop, that this one's probably not the one for you. Ports on this, we have two USB A's along the right side, and then a micro SD card slot as well. And then on the back, we have our Thunderbolt 4, a USB C, an HDMI 2.1, and our power adapter port. And then along the left side, we have our ethernet port with a expandable little bottom piece. It means you're gonna have to lift the laptop up to unplug and unplug that cable, which is not great. Uh, headset combo port right here. Overall, the port selection is good, not great. I would love to see another USB-A or USB-C on here, bringing the total up to five total USB ports. That'd be better. Um, and I would love to see a full-size SD card slot as well. Webcam quality was good. Really good color replication in particular um, with good like skin tone replication and some decent detail, but the resolution on the webcam, I feel like could be a lot higher. And especially given that I have really good lighting in here, it could have been a lot better. Um, the detail definitely felt like it was lacking. Like color replication was like a nine, but like the detail was only like a six or a seven. So I didn't have to remove an antivirus, which was great. I love that. And there was just standard Windows bloatware with like Spotify and LinkedIn. And Laptop control software. I feel like Alienware Command Center has matured at least a little bit. No major issues with Command Center this time. I was able to load in. I was able to update it through the command center software flawlessly. The only issue I had was when I was doing the initial setup phase, like after rebooting with the Windows update, and then it booted into a super low resolution Windows mouse that was like a half inch large. It was like all glitched out basically. And I couldn't get out of that screen without doing a long press on the power button for 10 seconds. And that's what got me out and able to restart and get back into normal Windows again. Um, other than that, I had basically no issues with the laptop during setup. It was breezy. It's easy to control it with Alienware Command Center, but I had to do a few things in the Command Center to prevent pop-ups and to prevent settings from change that I didn't want to change. So I had to disable Windows Dynamic Lighting, which made everything blue. Then I had to disable uh, the per-game RGB lighting because I wanted it to have the rainbow keyboard on here all the time. So I had to do that. Uh, as well as I had to update this from being blue to being uh, like a spectrum color changing on the trackpad to make it look as cool as it is right now. But I think the look on this laptop is really cool. It, this laptop definitely feels more premium than most laptops that come with an RTX 4070. Um, and, and that goes from the hinge to the build quality, to the keyboard quality, to the backlighting, to the per key RGB, to the Windows Hello. All of that, I think, is above average and helps this laptop reach into the more premium category, at least with those key features. Keyboard itself has a lot of functionality. There's no number pad, but there's a lot of uh, good functionality on these top rows as well as on the right side with the volume, mic mute. Overall, the keyboard is solid, all right? Touchpad, I believe it's plastic. As far as I can tell, it's plastic. It, and the other thing is, it's not as big as it could be. I feel like it could be a half inch bigger, uh, at least it's going down and up. So maybe a whole inch larger would seem possible to me if the design team was trying to maximize the trackpad size a little bit better. That said, the trackpad feels firm, it clicks well, and it wasn't an issue at all to use it. It was, it was just fine. A to 64 RAM speed test was not super fast. It was in the 60 to 80K range. And the latency was also not great at 131 nanoseconds. It was just pretty much your average RAM. Nothing really premium about the RAM speed or the RAM quality. The SSD is plenty fast with no issues there. Cinemetch R24 uh, was, I think, 970 for a multi-core score, which is good, but not amazing. I mean, it's pretty average for a Core Ultra 7, as far as I can tell. We were pulling uh, over like 100, 110 watts initially and that was pushing our temps up to 100 degrees celsius on the cpu only but that was only for a short period then it dropped down to 80 watts and then the cpu was averaging more like 80 85 degrees when it was at 80 watts which is good for long-term use um, so overall i think the cpu performance is good not great it's good enough for the for a core ultra 7 if that's what you want but this really isn't a cpu focused laptop if you want something with an i9 
13900 or 14900 with 24 cores, 32 threads, or 16 cores, 32 threads, like in the Ryzen uh, high core chips, the Dragon Range ones. Th those are going to give you a lot more CPU performance. This is the CPU in this is just going to give you good gaming performance and good all around Windows performance, but it's not going to be anything special for multi core rendering or running tons and tons of different apps at the same time. Fan noise testing. At max fans, this thing was 65 decibels, which is super loud. That is very loud, especially for a 16 inch laptop. Um, 54, 55 decibels in performance mode. And there really wasn't too much of a difference in performance. So in general, I'd probably recommend performance mode for most things. Uh, and then if you want to have a quieter system, the quiet mode does work well to reduce the temperature while still giving you good performance. It was about uh, 95 watts to the GPU while still only producing about, I think, 47, 48 decibels. So it was a nice blend of performance and sound, but it didn't really get super quiet in any of those modes. So if you're looking for a super quiet, like whisper quiet, like you're going to play a game in a library, this laptop's really not for you. Um, but if you were looking for good enough performance with moderate sound, then the quiet mode works quite well for that. Yeah, Apex Legends, Baldur's Gate 3, Counter-Strike 2, all of those ran really well. Baldur's Gate 3, of course, stuttering in between turns like normal. Many of the games that we played today, I'm like, yes, I can play it on ultra settings. Like Helldivers 2, we played it at 54, 55 FPS on average. But then when you, when you want to get higher FPS, it's kind of harder in some games to really boost the FPS. Like going from ultra settings down to medium settings only got us up to 66 fps only like 11 12 fps bump which is really not that much so you'd probably also have to lower the render scale and maybe even the settings down to low if you really want to push 90 100 fps with this laptop so you got to keep that in mind with the rtx 4070 and below the performance just does not scale as well in certain games and titles playable frame rates are achievable in nearly every title as long as you're willing to fiddle with the settings. Now, Cyberpunk 2077, Illuvium, Hogwarts, all three of those struggled with 1% lows and with significant stuttering when everything was set to ultra because it only has 8 gigs of VRAM at QHD resolution. So you're definitely going to want to be willing to tweak the textures down to low and maybe turn off ray tracing to help reduce the VRAM utilization. You can also turn DLSS down from quality to balanced or balanced down to performance if you want to have increased performance, increased FPS without having to fiddle with as many settings. Those are nice global settings that you can change that really boost your performance overall in the game. Almost all the titles played pretty good on Ultra, but to get great FPS and great 1% low performance, you really got to be willing to fiddle with the settings. And that's true for every RTX 4070 laptop at QHD resolution, pretty much across the board. That's just the nature of only having eight gigs of VRAM in a laptop. So uh, for 3 d Mark Time Spy, we got uh, almost 13,000 with the RTX 4070, which is really good. Uh, it's right near the peak of what an RTX 4070 can do. Some of them might test a little bit higher, but this wasn't really overclocked very much, only 50 slash 100 on the overclock. So you could overclock this and get into the 13,400, probably 13,500 range with the maximum possible overclock. Great overall thermals. I mean, the majority of the games, we were in the 60 to 70 degrees on the CPU and the GPU, which was like A+. plus. I mean, it makes sense because it doesn't really need to pull that much wattage for the GPU and the CPU. And we have some pretty good cooling in this thing um, with two large fans, two shared heat pipes, and a dedicated heat pipe for the CPU and GPU separately. So overall, I mean, this machine is a good machine. And Alienware Command Center has made a lot of improvements but the Achilles heel for this machine, I think, uh, that will turn some people off is the low display brightness at 276 nits, the lower color gamut being only 100% sRGB and 80% of the P3 color gamut. Um, and then if you're going to try to go for QHD gaming, you're going to need to have to fiddle with a lot of settings. You know, and if you don't want to have to fiddle with settings, you just need to get an RTX 4080 or higher so you have more VRAM and you, don't have to, you, just, you just run everything on Ultra and it's just going to play. 99% of the time perfectly. Now, regards to whether I can recommend this laptop at the full retail price, probably not at $1,899, but when this thing goes on sale and you want the premium features that this offers, 
it's certainly one to consider. Like, I, I mean, I can see a lot of people picking this up and really loving this laptop and using it for a long time because the build quality seems good. Everything about the laptop is pretty solid all around from thermals to usability to upgradability. So yeah, at the right price, I can definitely recommend the Alienware M16 R2. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.